Caves don't usually kill people. They've been there for a long time and they'll be for a lot longer. To the divers, it's world class. To anybody sitting on top, it's just a hole in the ground with a lot of water underneath. It's a whole different world underground. It's the closest thing you can get to outer space. Got your fins down there? Yep. yep, no worries, you should be ready to go. The sounds and sights of divers gearing up in the middle of a paddock seems out of place. But this sheep farm in the southeast of South Australia is home to one of the most spectacular cave diving sites in the country. It's a whole different world underground. It's the closest thing you can get to outer space. Kilsby Sinkhole is renowned for its crystal clear water and the rays of light that pierce through it on a sunny day. Now, a couple of hundred metres back into the cave and a depth of 40 to 50 metres, you can look up and still see the clouds. So that clarity of the water is amazing. The huge and dramatic cavity attracts divers from across the globe. There's some amazing big ones like massive amphitheatres that you get into and it's like you're floating in the middle of the sky almost. It's just that you're the only one there and there's walls way off in the distances either side. Um, yeah, and it's just a, it's real thrilling to see that, yes. Mm. Owner Graham Kilsby says it's not always serene in the sinkhole. Back in the 70s, the Defence Department leased the site for weapons testing. They were actually punching sonar boys under compressed air into the water. So rather than dropping them out of a plane at a very high altitude, they were actually punching these, these uh, sonar boys into the, into the water. All good. Right. Not far from the Killsby's place is a portal into the underwater world that's so small, equipment has to be lowered in separately. But the humble entrance hidden among cows on a dairy farm is very deceiving. You got me? Yep. See you later. Hello? Diver? We've had people that have dived all around the world who have come to here and they just couldn't believe the size of the room that we've got under our feet here. Um, in the middle of a cow pack, in the middle of nowhere. Um, other places they go, they're in the side of mountains and stuff like this, but this is a perfectly flat land pretty well around here. Uh, you can't see water on the top of it anywhere, but there's a, there's, a, there's a lot under it. This is the shaft. It's the darkest and deepest recorded sinkhole in the region, dropping more than 120 metres. It was discovered by the owner's grandfather. When he was ploughing a paddock, and the horse put its foot through the surface. This pile of rubble 35 metres down was the family's unsuccessful attempt to fill it. We tipped the stones down it and we really didn't have a clue how big it was underneath and we had no hope of filling it up. It looks like an anthill down there and we've tipped a thousand tonnes of stones down there. Like Graham Kilsby, owner Trevor Ashby is thankful to have groundwater to grow pasture for his cows. But while he brings the water up, he has no interest in venturing below. It's no value to me, I'm not a diver. I'm, yes, of the water underneath we make a living out of, but uh, to, it's not, to the divers it's world class, to anybody sitting on top it's just a hole in the ground with a lot of water underneath. The excitement it does incite in divers from across the globe is captured in a visitor's book. But among the rave reviews is also a poignant reminder of the risks. Four red crosses alongside the names of the divers who died in the shaft in 1973. Those four that did dive had no uh, ropes or guidelines or anything that day that when it did happen and they were didn't know how big it was and it was just unfortunate that the way the caves uh, uh, made or the limestone formation, they just got trapped coming up. There is no doubt this type of diving has a dangerous reputation. From 1969 to 1974, 11 people died exploring caves in the southeast of South Australia. But there have been far fewer fatalities since a National Cave Divers Association was set up 
and training standards introduced. Caves don't usually kill people. Um, the caves aren't doing nothing. They've been there for a long time and they'll be for a lot longer. Um, so it's the people that are entering, um, whether they make a mistake or something like that, uh, that's where the, where the problem comes into it. And it's when things go wrong, knowing how to cope and deal with those issues underground, uh, yeah, that's what um, gets you back again. <laughs> as well as Killsby's and the Shaft, there are around half a dozen other dive sites on farms and some clear signs below that agriculture is the main pursuit around here. There's an old harvester. That's just sitting on the bottom there. That's interesting to go down and see. Somebody's obviously decided it was past its use by date. There are still parts of this extensive underwater museum that haven't been explored. Divers hope landholders will one day give them permission to open those doors. The challenge of a new site is always fantastic. It's a big thrill to put line in um, and have people follow where nobody's been before. <laughs>